Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Finishing up with retired FBI agent Don Adams. AdamsJFK.com is the website. We'll have to have him back up again. So much information, but I want to try to get to as many calls as possible. Briefly, from what you said in the last interview, the questions you were allowed to ask Mill Tier were basically distractions from the real questions, and that's why you thought it was a cover-up. Well, uh, he asked a question about the Kennedy assassination. Did he have any knowledge of it? Okay. Once he answered no on that, I mean, the question was done. Uh, I couldn't probe into it. Uh, what did What did he know as far as Martin Luther's uh, Martin Luther King's direction as to where he was going? Uh, it was same thing with that. And then the bombing of the three children in Birmingham, Alabama. Well, what did he know about that? And he said he knew nothing about it. Yet we know from information developed after that that uh, he had heavy discussion concerning the bombing of those three kill- kids in, in Birmingham and, uh, and uh, of course, the Kennedy assassination and so on. I mean, And then he died mysteriously. Let's jump to Shannon in Mississippi. Right. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Alex and Mr. Adams? Uh, Mr. Adams, I just want to get straight to a question for you. Uh, the man that filmed that famous video that everybody has seen, I've watched it over and over and over. I just wanted to ask you a question. The man that filmed that video, was he ever investigated? Was he a part of the CIA? And also, Mr. Adams, when those first shots were fired, did anybody ever investigate or even look at the driver of the limo? He took a wrong turn. Is it possible that maybe he could have fired that fatal shot? And when it was fired, uh, Mrs. Jackie Onassis was trying to jump out of the back of the limo, and then they put her back inside, and the limo just drives okay, off. Well, that's a lot of questions. What was the what was the first one? Uh, about the man that took that famous video. Yeah, Zabruder. Okay. Um, I saw the original Zabruder film uh, before it uh, was changed and altered, and uh, the actual shot uh, into the throat and the, and the back of his head being blown off, which you knew there was another shot from the front. Uh, before... That uh, film that I watched, which was a copy of the original, before that went out into the public and started getting dissected in that as far as frames is concerned, uh, that was a legitimate. And, and those things did happen just as they showed. Yeah, and from my research, it's pure quackery that the driver turns around and shoots the president. And I've blown sure. up the video. I've looked at it. Sure. And uh, he did stop the car twice. And uh, almost completely to a dead stop, which is against... Yeah, everything. so clearly, clearly in on it's what you're saying. For sure. Well, what I'm saying is... What about turning around and shooting him? No, I, that didn't happen, and there's a lot of people that have movies and stuff of that, and that did not happen. But, but Yeah, well, the guy that put that out also said that he's seen videos that aliens shot of the crucifixion of Jesus. So, yeah, yeah I, mean, give me uh, I can understand that. Now, the thing is, is that when this guy stops the car and does what he did, uh, that just troubles me terribly because these agents are trained to know exactly how to react in the minute that a report goes out from a weapon and that, hell, you get the hell out of there. You don't stop the car and almost come to a complete stop. Well, you don't send the president out uh, when people are openly talking right. about killing him or you at right. least have the armored limousine. But see, all that stuff disappeared. I mean, they went to the Secret Service, and they went to the FBI in Washington, went to the FBI all over and that. Atlanta knew about it. My partner knew about it. Uh, but I was never told. And, and all I'm saying is, is that because I was a new agent going into that office, even though I was 32 years old, had been through Korea and everything else, they thought that I was naive and I wouldn't pick up on any of that stuff. And as a result of it, assigned a case to me because why would you give a? I mean, I was 13 years younger as far as service was concerned than the guy that I was working with. And then why would you assign a case to me? And then I find out later on, many years later, 1993, 94, or even later than that, when we went to the archives, that Moral McGraw did an investigation on Miltier uh, in 1962, a year before me. All right, we're out of time.
Okay. Don Adams, thank you so much. I look forward to speaking to you in the near future. God bless your courage, sir. God bless you, too. And thank you for helping and, and trying to get this to the public, Alex. You're doing a marvelous job. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Alex Jones asking you for a minute of your time to tell you about soap. Not detergents, but good old-fashioned pure soap made by the Cal Ben Soap Company, a family-owned and operated American company. My family, staff, friends, and radio listeners are constantly telling me how much they love these products for bath, hair, laundry, and dishes. There is nothing like these factory direct, big money saving, triple concentrated soaps anywhere. Get a free detailed catalog by calling 800 340 7091 or see them online at 5starsoap.com or infowars.com. Let's talk to the owner of 5 Star Soap, Marty Schachter, and see what he has to say. As founder and owner for over 63 years, People keep asking me, how's business? I'm happy to say our business is going down the drain. Call us at 1-800-340-7091. Visit our website, 5starsoap.com, for buying our one- to two-month soap sampler. Thank you. Let me tell you a little bit about one of our great sponsors, HomeGain.com. This is the place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, and getting any real estate questions answered. Go to homegain.com and see what I'm talking about. All you need to do is type in your home address and you will get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. This is a great way to be able to monitor the value of your home. And again, it's absolutely free. There are tons of tools to help you. For instance, if you want to remodel your home, go to homegain.com. Use their home sale maximizer to help you determine which home improvements can most increase your home's value before you put it on the market. For 10 years, these folks have been helping home sellers and buyers. Visit their link at InfoWars.com. Look for Max, the orange home game gorilla, to help you with any real estate needs you might have. You'll love this site. It's HomeGain.com. H-O-M-E-G-A-I-N.com. Check them out today. Listen up, friends. This is Alex Jones with Key Information. The mainstream media is now admitting that we're going into a depression. Don't be dependent on the government for you and your family. You need to get your own supply of high-quality storable foods from eFoodsDirect.com. They're the best company out there, the longest continually operating, with a ton of great food to choose from. It's all fresh, made on a monthly basis, not some old cruddy food they're selling you like some of the other guys. Try their new evacuation pack, a two-week supply of delicious, easy-to-fix food. It comes with all the equipment you need to prepare it. With open talk of a strike on Iran in the next three months, the crisis in the Gulf, and possible evacuations, get yourself and your family ready today. The place to go is eFoodsDirect.com. Go to their website online right now, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex, or call 800-409-5633. Again, on the web, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex, or give them a call at 800-409-5633. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. All right, for the next 25 minutes, Mark Moreno joins us, and I'm blitzing through a bunch of key news that ties into this. Bill Gates admits there are death panels, and they're a good idea. Obama's having to admit your insurance premiums are going to go up. It all ties into this environmental population reduction cult. And now the U.N. came out last week and said, we're getting rid of the global warming hype. we got a whole new group of scare tactics, and we're going to target human population and say we've got to reduce that. But then I've got a Chinese government report saying their population has been decimated and it's screwing up their society. Here it is, London Independent. China rethinks its controversial one-child policy. That's coming up after Mark Moreno leaves us. I tried to get to this on the Sunday show, but didn't. Uh, but we will cover that key intel coming up uh, at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Mark Moreno runs the climate website, climatedepot.com, the premier site exposing this fraud uh, for the Committee for Conservative Tomorrow. Uh, and, of course, uh, he's also uh, worked with the Republicans on the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works and is really the guy that helped educate um, Senator Enhoff and others and work for him. And I wanted to get Mark on. We've got Lord Moncton on, had been on about a month and a half, uh, Thursday for a full hour, because you've got Pachari nine months ago saying Climategate wasn't even real, now admitting, okay, we just made up all this stuff about melting 
Himalayan uh, glaciers and all the rest of it, and we have hidden the decline, but it's still for a good reason. And yeah, we made a lot of money moving industry out of Western Europe and England and the U.S. to India, but that's okay. And now you have the UN IPCC lead author rips IPCC's claims as outright false. You have another IPCC leader, a Santer, earlier last year saying, yeah, we took out other top authors who didn't agree with us and said there wasn't uh, an increase in temperature, actually a decline the last decade. So all of this is going on, but they don't care. They st Al Gore still goes on the news and says, peer-reviewed, not one scientist on Earth disagrees. You don't think the moon landings happen if you question us. So I want him to, he hadn't been on in I don't know, four or five months, recap all that's unfolded. Because if you thought Climate Gate was big, it just gets more outrageous and more insane. I mean, just a gaggle of lying fraudsters who want to create a bunch of collectivist taxes. I've got CNBC reporting on world government funded by carbon taxes that you pay to private banks. Madoff, uh, Ken Lay, Al Gore came up with a lot of these things. I mean, this is a group of swindling slime bags. And uh, Mark Moreno joins us to go over uh, and, and, and chronicle all of this. Uh, but meanwhile, they're over in England saying they want to arrest climate deniers. And saying they want to make it illegal and saying we need to all over the British news. We've, we've read the headlines. We need to get authoritarian. If the public's too dumb to accept carbon uh, tyranny, we'll just force it on them. I mean, this is just a gaggle of crooks that want to run our lives. Mark Moreno, good to have you on with us. Hey, thanks a lot. Happy to be here. Uh, you, interesting thing you brought this up uh, about forcing it on us. We had the New York Times, Tom Friedman. Uh, who earlier this year lauded China's environmental policies, and he said, and I quote Tom Friedman, who lives in a mansion, by the way, in suburban Maryland, one party can just impose politically difficult but critically important policies needed to move a society forward in China, unlike this messy democracy where they can be thwarted. And what's interesting is right after he said that, China came out and did all these draconian carbon uh, limits on some of their industry, and they, they had complete havoc. People couldn't even flush the toilet in some parts of China. I mean, this is what they want. They want a one-party rule, a green rule. They openly talk about global governance. But you asked for some of the updates here. What is happening is hilarious. I call it the Dan Rather uh, defense. Remember the uh, Bush National Guard documents, shown to be a forgery, shown to be a hoax. But Dan Rather's defense at the time was, well, you know, it really doesn't matter if the documents, the story was accurate, but the documents may have been false. And what they've now done is they, they, the United Nations IPCC climate panel that shared the Nobel Prize uh, with the masseuse in chief, or with Al Gore, the former vice president, they literally have now said, yes, there's all these errors, and this was wrong, and yes, we admit that the government's handpicked the scientists that joined us, and they'd only pick warmest scientists. Yes, we admit that only dozens, uh, only a few dozen scientists actually looked at whether CO2 actually has a warming impact. Yes, we admit to all these different scandals, and, and the new inquiry that came out a um, couple weeks ago was really devastating to the U.N., but they're basically saying, all oh, that doesn't matter because we still got the science right. Sure, we messed up the process. Sure we, sure, we had a bunch of con men doing this, and sure, we admit to this, and sure, this happened, but it doesn't affect the underlying science. It's the exact defense Dan Rather used back in 2004, saying the, the fake documents don't mean the story wasn't true. And that's where the United Nations is right now, and they expect us to take them seriously. Well, Mark, uh, I, mean, I mean, going back here, though, um, first they denied that Climate Gate was what it really was, showing their internal fraud premeditatedly, yeah. and now they're just still driving forward uh, with all of this, and how, I mean, how do we counter these people? Newt Gingrich is still running around saying we need carbon taxes. Uh, uh, Glenn Beck told USA Today that he thinks global warming's real. I mean, I mean uh, the issue is a lot of Republicans and conservatives are still going along with this, well, I will say, in terms of Newt Gingrich, Newt Gingrich sat on a sofa with Nancy Pelosi, and he still defends that decision in an ad for Al Gore out in front of the Capitol. That was outrageous. Now, I think the Glenn Beck quote, I, I think that was in USA Week, and I believe Beck was being facetious with the reporter by saying he believes that the globe is warm, but he still questions mankind's role. Um, but in terms of you know looking at the, at the political and scientific climate right now, the movement 
as absolutely dead. The problem is there's a thing called zombies and the undead, and this can be resurrected as quickly as a lame duck session of Congress, as quickly as Obama ordering his EPA to start regulating CO2s because...